family of God. And so those that are visiting with us today, thank you for coming. And, you know, under different circumstances, we would love to just hug you and, and give you a, a, a high five because we're, we're a family of God here in this church. And, and we, we love to be able to see each other. And, you know, when you're a family, right, you miss each other and you want to come and see each other, right? Every week we miss each other. Even those of you that are online watching us right now, you know, we miss you. Uh, there's still some seats here available, even though there are already physical distancing. You can still come. We still have enough seats here, all right, with, even with physical distancing, all right? So we would love to also have you here come with us. And just put in the chat where you are watching from right now, all right? So thank you for being with us as well today. And those that are visiting with us here uh, on site, let us know by filling up a Connect card. Uh, you can do that online or on our app uh, or just visit our guest services so that we will be able to acknowledge your visit today. Um, and by the way, um, I want you to know that we are continuing our series, right? Amen. Uh, are you blessed with the series? Some of it you've been watching online. Some of it you watch it on site. Uh, but we are continuing our series, um, I Believe. And we are learning the statement of faith that was passed on uh, by the apostles to ensure that believers will uh, be reminded of what they believe and that they will not be uh, swayed to false teachings, all right? So I'd like us to read again the Apostles' Creed, okay? So uh, please uh, read it on the screen there. Read it with me, okay? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So um, if you didn't hear some of the messages, if you're just joining us first time even online, make sure that you read uh, or listen to the other messages. It's available on our app. The whole series is there. It's also available on YouTube. So make sure that you listen to the other so that you get a, a good foundation on your faith, okay? So that what, when we're talking about we believe something, we understand what we're believing, right? So we are now on the last message of this series. Uh, last time we talked about the resurrection of the body, all right? And uh, we talked about the rapture. Now today we'll talk about I believe in the everlasting life, Right? I believe in the everlasting life. Now, I looked up the word everlasting, and uh, it also means eternal. And so uh, it's, it can be interchangeable. Some use everlasting or eternal. So I'd like you to turn with me to our text today in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let's read it. All right, it says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. All right, so what comes to your mind when you hear the word eternal life? Now, one thing for sure, the Bible tells us that God wants us to have eternal life. He doesn't want anyone to perish and be condemned. And friends, Christians are not the only ones that believe in eternal life. Other religions also believe that there is life after. In many ways, there is a quest for eternal life. Man has had a growing desire to live forever. That's why you can see that in many of the advertising. You know, uh, people always want to look young and, you know, uh, looking for always the fountain of youth and somehow if we could live longer and, and uh, you know, uh, if we could just live forever. Some are forever 21, 
because they never change, right? <laughs> and so, even in the days of Jesus, people wanted to know how to have eternal life. You know, but the concept of everlasting or eternal life is hard to imagine because our minds and bodies are confined to a limited time and space. It is hard for us to grasp it. But let me share with you, first of all, what eternal life is not. Okay, what eternal life is not. It is not a life into oblivion or nothingness. Uh, it is also not reincarnation that people believe you will come again in another form like a bird or a cockroach or a, a rat or uh, a vegetable, you know, and, and that's reincarnation. So what eternal life is, is that what the Bible talks about, okay? What the Bible talks about eternal life is that Jesus, that Jesus gave, that eternal life that we're talking about is a life with God forever. That's the eternal life we're talking about according to the scripture. It is a life in the presence of the Almighty God now and eventually in a uh, glorious body, a life in a glorious body that is incorruptible, free from sickness and pain, amen. Uh, it is a life of no worry or concerns. Now, you and I uh, cannot comprehend a life like that for a week. Try to imagine what it would be like forever. All right, that kind of a life. Now, look what Jesus says in his prayer. He said in John 17, verse 1 to 3, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, Jesus, the context of this is that Jesus was praying toward the end of his ministry. Jesus was soon going to the cross, all right, to die for your sins and my sin. And at this time, he's praying for future believers. He's praying for all the people that would put their faith in him in the future. Notice what he said in verse 3. He said, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Now Jesus declares that he was sent for a purpose. Why did Jesus come? What's life all about? Well, friends, the Christian life is more than the life after. It's also the life here and now. Now, let me give you some truths about eternal life. All right, so these are some truths about eternal life. The first is this. Jesus came to give us eternal life. He came to give us eternal life that people are wanting to have. All right, Jesus came to pay for our sins so that we will be forgiven. So why do we need our sins forgiven and to be paid for? The answer, so that we will have eternal life. Now, Romans 6.23 tells us this. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, here you go, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So does this make sense now? That the consequence of our sin all right, the wages or the consequence of our sin is death. And that is simply the eternal separation from God, right? Now, but God's gift is the eternal life in Jesus Christ. So that's his gift to us. There are some Christians who believe that we are already predestined. You have no choice in the matter that before the foundation of the world, God already decided that some of us will have eternal life and others will be condemned to hell already. Can you imagine like among us here, some that God would have decided, predestined, decided already way before the, the foundation of the earth, before you were born, you are already destined to go to hell. So would you have a choice then to do anything? 
I don't think, uh, for me, that doesn't make sense because I don't see that in the scriptures and is not the loving God of the Bible. All right, so, but the truth is, as we have read in the scripture, God doesn't want anyone to perish. That's why Jesus came. Now, if you already knew that God already decided that you're, you, know, you may go to heaven or you may not, or you may go to hell, then some people will just live their life and forget about, you know, Jesus doesn't need to come. And you don't need to anymore put your faith in Christ because anyway, he's already decided what's going to happen in your life. No, that's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us you have a choice. That you can put your faith, even though he's decided that he wants you, that he doesn't want anyone to perish, but still you and I have a choice to choose him, that to choose what Jesus Christ has done for us. All right? The whole purpose of Jesus' arrival, the whole purpose of the cross and the resurrection is so that you may have eternal life. Amen? It's really about life. Eternal is just the adjective that describes how long it takes. <laughs> it's forever. But it means that which endures or exists forever. That is eternal. That which has a beginning but will have no end. So that means there is a beginning. All right, so eternal life has a beginning. And that eternal life starts now say now. now it starts now when we commit our life to jesus not sometime in the future or not sometime when you die but now when you commit your life to jesus you have eternal life amen it the life starts now okay so even now this means that the whole reason that jesus came that Jesus died on the cross and rose again is so that you could have life even now. Let me correct some of our thinking here, okay, as Christians. Some of, some of us have this idea that Jesus came so we could have stuff. <laughs> so we could have toys. <laughs> so we could have a lot of stuff. So we could be well off. We think that the purpose of this existence is just to be happy and to have stuff and to never be sick. You know, our idea is, I'll give God a try. You know, and, then, and, and if I can just get enough points with God, then I will have an easy life. Everything will be just be fine. I'll be rewarded with a good life. Well, there's this idea being propagated that if you give your life to Jesus, that all of a sudden, in this existence, everything will be smooth and fine and everything will just be great and nothing ever will go wrong with you. That our family will be blessed and enjoy life doing what we want to do. Now friends, don't get me wrong. Yes, the Bible says that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing, but our, our idea of blessing is to have stuff. <laughs> that is our idea of blessing. That's not why Jesus came. He came to bring the kingdom of God, the rule and the order of God, and to establish his lordship. That's why he came. That those who put their faith in him will become sons and daughters in the kingdom and would have eternal life in him. He never said life will, in this world will be easy. In fact, the last statement he said in John 16, verse 33, says this. Before he looked up and he prayed, he said in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Where? In me or in him. In this world, say this world. So in this world you will have trouble. <laughs> but, he said, take heart, I have overcome the world. So my friends, brothers and sisters, this should not be a surprise to you that in this world, we will have trouble. We will have pandemic. <laughs> we will have epidemics and whatever demics is there, is there and different variants. <laughs> we will have trouble, but be encouraged. 
we need to be encouraged that if we are in Christ, you will have peace and you will overcome. Amen? Come on, give Him praise. Yes. We will overcome and we will have peace because when we're in Him. Now, every one of us will go through difficulties and challenges, whether you're in Christ or not in Christ. But the advantage that we have is that when we go through trouble, Christ is with us and we can overcome and have peace in Him. And Jesus came so you could have real life. It's not that it will be easy. See, real life is not about the absence of trouble, but the presence of Jesus in the midst of trouble. That He will walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. That even though we go through troubles, He is with us. And so let me encourage you, if you're going through some difficulty, you're going through challenges today, whether it's uh, employment or relationship issue or health issue, whatever you're going through today, I want you to know that Jesus is walking with you if you're in Him. And that's the good news. You see, real life is not about having no trouble. Real life is knowing that in the midst of my trouble, the Lord is with me. See, you know, John 10.10 10 says this, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's what the enemy, that's what the devil does. I have come, Jesus is speaking, that they may have life and have it to the full. In another translation, it says, have it abundantly. And the word there is perison. Perison in the Greek word is actually more than enough. All right, that is the, that is the translation is more than enough. It's, you will have that kind of an abundant life. Jesus came to give us that life, an abundant life, and a life eternal. The second uh, truth about eternal life is that eternal life is knowing God. It is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus said in John 17, verse 3, we read it a while ago, now... This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So we can see the definition. Jesus defines eternal life basically in two words, knowing God. Right? Eternal life is about knowing God. That is transformational. Knowing God will transform your life. Jesus thought that eternal life it's not about a destination, right? Now, we know that we, we studied last week about the resurrection of the body and, you know, that resurrection would have a uh, different uh, destination, one to uh, heaven and then the other to uh, eternal condemnation and separation from God. You know, but the eternal life is not about that destination. For many people, when they think about eternal life, it's about going to heaven or hell sometime down the road. But in reality, that life begins now. So you don't have to wait for down the road. You know, how are you living your life today? Right? See, in reality, that life begins now. It's about a relationship. And Jesus said, now, this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So when he says that eternal life is knowing God, he's not talking about the knowledge about God. Now, he's talking about the knowledge of God. There's a big difference in believing things about God and actually knowing God. There's a difference. You could know about God or you could know God. You know, and when you're knowing God, you can trust in Him. Trusting in God comes from a relationship and goes beyond, you know, uh, just uh, information. You know, it goes beyond just knowing about Him. Believing things about God is educational or informational, and knowing God is transformational. Right? So... You know, information alone will not transform your life. But knowing someone will transform your life. You see, knowing about God gives you information about God, 
but not enough to put or to actually put your trust in him. Let me, let me illustrate. You may have heard, you know, something about me, right? I mean, you can Google it. I hope it looks okay. <laughs> In today's times, people just, you know, especially the young people today, before they go anywhere, they'll just Google it first. They want to see the review first. Right? It's got to have a good review. <laughs> so whether you're going to go to the doctor, you're going to go to a restaurant, it's always, what's the review? <laughs> so you know what? You may have heard something about me. Maybe you've seen it in Google or something, or, or maybe you've seen it on YouTube. But you actually don't know me. You know, and, and because you don't have a relationship with me, you probably won't trust me. For you to trust me, you need to have a relationship somehow with me. In one way or the other. So in the same way, knowing God is having a relationship with him that we can trust him trusting in god is transformational it will change your life amen when jesus says that he came died on the cross and rose again his whole deal was about giving you and i eternal life eternal life is knowing god and jesus christ he came to offer you a relationship not just in the life after you know or in heaven but even here and now he wants to give us that life a relationship with him and the purpose of life is to know God and walk with God you know the things that that you've heard about in the scriptures the things that you've read whether you are a church person or not all of, our, uh, all of it is about knowing God. Everything that you read here is about knowing God. For many of us who grew up in the church, you know, uh, the whole emphasis was about the life after. Somewhere down the road. But that's not actually what the Bible teaches. It includes that. But Jesus thought that the reason why you're alive right now, the reason that God needs knit you together in your mother's womb that before the foundation of the earth that he had uh, created you so that you can know God and have a relationship with God and walk with God see for some some of us you know we're doing what's right we're living a so-called godly life or a good life sorry and really, you know, what we're after, what we're hoping for, is what God will give us. It could be that we're trusting uh, in some kind of a outcome. That if I do something, that there's something that God will do. That we're trusting in some blessing instead of trusting in Him, the one who actually blesses. That's why we are having difficulty when our reality is not what we had expected. You know, so we get frustrated. Friends, life is knowing God. Not in the nice stuff, but in the midst of pain and suffering, in our sickness, in our difficulties, in all of our tragedies, we still can walk with God. And even in the pandemic, we can walk with God. Amen? Life is about God. It's not about getting His stuff. It's about getting Him who provides all things. It's the cornerstone of the whole thing that through my faith in Jesus, I have eternal life now. Which is what? Eternal life is a relationship with God that never ends. Amen? So, the question people often ask is, what can I do to have eternal life? Well, one person approached Jesus, was a lawyer. In the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 10, verse 25 to 28, the, the Gospel records it this way. On one occasion, an expert in the law, a lawyer, stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do 
to inherit eternal life. What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. So Jesus said in verse 28, do this, and you will live. Well, do what? Love the Lord your God. <laughs> with what? All your heart, with all your soul, with all of your strength, and with all your mind. That's what you're supposed to do. And love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus said. So if we want to live in the kingdom of God, we must live in God's ways, right? And believing in God must translate to loving God with a passion. He said, with all your heart, all your souls, all your strength, all your mind. Friends, what you value the most, all right, where your treasure is, that's really where your heart is. Someone once said, what is important to you is not what you say you will do, but what you end up doing. Let me say that again, all right, and see if that's true to you. What is important to you is not what you say you will do, but what you end up doing. That's what's really important. For example, if you spend more time watching TV than reading the Word, that's where your heart is. Okay? If you spend more time being outdoors, enjoying nature, than being in the house of God, that's where your heart is. Now you can say, I love God, I love to worship Him, but what you end up doing is really where your heart is. If you spend more time in the fitness center developing your body than to serve God with it, that's where your heart is. Friends, God is not asking for a half-hearted, half-soul, half-strength, half-minded Christian. He's looking for those who will love Him with all their heart, all their soul, all of their strength, and all of their mind. Amen. Yes, give Him praise. Eternal life belongs to those who have a passion for God. They can't get enough of God in their lives. Everything they do, their priorities, their decisions, their entertainment, all revolves around God. Now let me ask you a question. How can we spend eternity with the God we don't want to spend, with, spend time with now? Think about it. Does that make sense to you? You know, how can you spend eternity with the God that we don't want to spend time now? See, when we get to heaven, the only thing that we will be doing is worshiping the Lord and serving Him. So if we don't want doing that now, I don't know if you'll enjoy it in heaven. <laughs> All right? I don't know if we will be able to do that in heaven. We need to apply it now. See, I think it was Rick Warren who said, our life is in earth. He wrote in his uh, 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 purpose-driven uh, book, and he was saying that, um, you know, what our life here right now is a, is a rehearsal. <laughs> it's a practice of what we will be doing in heaven. And so we need to apply it now. Receiving eternal life is not about a conversion. It is living a life in obedience to God. The gospel teaches about discipleship, becoming disciples of Christ. You know, there's a German uh, revivalist by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a German revivalist who died proclaiming Christ during the Nazi rule. Now, he said in this book, here's the book, The Cost of Discipleship, all right? And he says, cheap grace is life without discipleship. Grace without the cross. See, that's cheap grace. It costs something, friends. It costs something to have eternal life. Yes, we are saved by the grace of God, but that grace did not come cheap. Jesus died for it. So what you are giving us a gift, somebody died for. Imagine. That somebody gave you a gift that somebody had to die just to give you that gift. Would you appreciate it? 
or we just let it go. That's how valuable we are to God. It cost Jesus his life. And he goes on to say, Dietrich Bonhoeffer says in his book, he goes on to say, costly grace is the treasure hidden in the field. For the sake of it, a man will gladly go and sell all that he has. It is the pearl of great price to buy which the merchant will sell all his goods. It is the kingly rule of Christ for whose sake a man will pluck out the eye which causes him to stumble. It is the call of Jesus Christ at which the disciple leaves his nets and follows him. See, if we truly love God, we will obey him. Listen to what Jesus says in John 14, 23. Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home to him, with him. Friends, God desires to make his home in you, right? Um, God wants to saturate you with his presence. Jesus is looking for those who love him and obey him. How many of you will say, Jesus, I love you and I'll obey you? He's not asking you to convert. He's asking you to be transformed. We cannot say, I love you, Lord, and totally disobey what he says in his word. We cannot say, I love you, Lord, and continue in sin and not even ask forgiveness or repent of our sin friends and still believe that we have eternal life friends it's time for the church of jesus christ to rise up to the standard of god we don't lower god's standard to meet our standard we raise our standard to the standard of god another person that approached jesus was the rich young man in the gospel of mark chapter 10 verse 17 to 19 he also said this as jesus started on his way a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him and he said good teacher he asked look at his question again what must i do to inherit eternal life why do you call me good jesus answered no one is good except god alone you know the commandments do not murder do not commit adultery do not steal do not give false testimony do not defraud honor your father and mother you know what happened if you read the rest of that story the rich young man said he has done all that and jesus tells him you're still lacking one thing sell all your possessions and then follow me but the rich young man walked away sadly because he had great wealth again the issue is relationship with jesus christ to have eternal life and this man's wealth was hindering that relationship with him. He, was, he has fulfilled, he said he has fulfilled all the commandments, but he was half-hearted with his relationship with Jesus. Jesus knew what was holding him back, right? He could not part with his material possessions. He didn't love God with all his heart and all his soul all his strength and all his mind he went through the motions of being religious which we could do we could go through the motion of just being religious but his heart was in his wealth not god see our heart could be far from god but we could go through the motions jesus says you know uh, your lips uh, uh, you know, declare or worship me, but your heart is far from me. You see, what could be hindering us could be our, you know, work, material possession that is holding us from actually following and having a relationship with Jesus. So eternal life belongs to those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship with Christ is not a label or a religion but a lifestyle that consumes you to live a life pleasing to God. Amen? Romans 6.22 tells us, But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness 
and the result is eternal life. So friends, what is the result of holiness? What is the result of a life walking with God and obeying Him? Well, the result of holiness is eternal life. And now the third truth is this. Recognize that eternal life is a gift. It's not something we can work for. It's not something you can buy. Romans 6.23 tells us, Paul said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. So eternal life, all right, friends, was already given to us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ more than 2,000 years ago. It was already a gift. It was given to us. He, he already sacrificed his life. We didn't deserve it or earn it. It was given to us as a gift. Say gift. Yes. It's a gift. But like any other gift, we need to just receive it and appropriate it in our life. I mean, when you receive a gift, you know, you can't pay for that gift. I mean, that would be an insult to the one who gave it to you, right? Or you can't just ignore it and throw it away. You receive that gift and use the gift. You know, if somebody gave you a gift today, you can simply receive it or refuse it. But there is nothing you can do to deserve that gift. It is given to you. But there's nothing that you can uh, work or, or do something so that you can deserve that gift. But once you receive the gift, you need to use it to benefit your life. The gift of eternal life is the same way. You cannot buy it. You cannot be good enough to deserve it. You simply receive it. Isn't that good news? That you don't have to be good enough to, to deserve something. I know I don't deserve it. I know there's nothing I could do that, that would make God love me. He just loved me the way I am. And I thank God for that. See, friends, some people think that they can earn their eternal life. They probably think that God has some point system in heaven. You know, like we, we like to accumulate points, right? How many? Be honest. How many cards do you have accumulating points? <laughs> you know, and we, we like to have points that somehow if I could get enough points, you know, uh, just like you can get points to, so you can get a free Starbucks coffee or free Tim Hortons coffee or free McDonald's, whatever, you know, you're always trying to get some points that you can get something free. Now, thinking that maybe... If there's also that, that heaven maybe has some kind of a point system that if I can earn enough points with God that somehow I can have a free trip to heaven. Well, friends, it doesn't work that way. And I thank God it doesn't work that way because I could never accumulate enough points for me to get to heaven. <laughs> I thank God that it's just a gift it gives to us. You know, if that was true, then the death of Jesus on the cross was in vain. He wouldn't have to die if we could earn it ourselves. If you could just, you know, give more donations or help more people. If we could just do that and go to heaven, then why would Jesus have to die? He wouldn't have to come and die if we could do it ourselves. So friends, it's just a gift. The gift of eternal life comes through the grace of salvation in Christ. Now, salvation means, is, you know, giving your heart to the Lord. Jesus saves us. Salvation comes first, then we have eternal life. You know, so you cannot have one without the other. You got to have salvation first, then you have eternal life. You can't have eternal life before you have salvation. <laughs> the reason why you get eternal life is because you get salvation. And that salvation is a gift from God. The Bible says this, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. There you go, you can't earn it. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So you can't say, well, I've done this, I've done that. That's why I can go to heaven. That's why I can be saved. No. Again, it's a gift from God. 
But once you receive the gift of eternal life, you must appropriate it in your life. So many Christians today have received the gift of eternal life, but they have no passion for God. They are dead as a doormat, lifeless, passionless, fruitless. They exist, but they're not serving God. They're simply waiting for the second coming of Jesus. What good is a gift if you don't use it? Friends, what good is eternal life if nothing changes in our life? If we remain in sin, what good is it? What good is eternal life to you if you continue to be bound by traditions of men that oppose God's ways? Friends, the gift of eternal life is the best gift we could ever receive. And we need to treasure it and apply it in our daily life. Amen? It is the best gift you could ever receive. It's just given to you. You don't have to work for it. And so here's the fourth truth and last truth. You can receive eternal life today. <laughs> That's the good news. You can receive it today. Amen? Yes, even you, those of you watching online, even though wherever you are watching from, you can receive it today. The Bible is very clear that eternal life only comes through His Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 12 says this. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So friends, if you have Jesus Christ in you, you have life. But if you do not have him, then you won't have life. The good news is, and here's the good news, you don't have to wait to die before you have eternal life. Amen? Do you remember the teaching in the resurrection? I was talking about resurrection of the living. You don't even have to die. You're alive. <laughs> and because you're now with Christ, you have eternal life with Him. When the resurrection of the dead happens or rapture happens, even you are alive, you will be caught up in the air with Him and to be with Him forever. You can have eternal life. You don't have to die to do that. Friends, in fact, if you died without Him, it's too late. Okay? If you died without Christ, it's too late. And that's the reason why we have to tell our relatives, we tell our friends, we have to start with ourselves and say, God, I want to make sure that when something happens to me, even now, I already have eternal life in you. That my eternal life is guaranteed because I have put my faith and trust in you. And that's the reason why we have to declare that in our life and even through our family or relatives so that we make sure that they are not going to be left behind and that they will not be caught off guard that when something happens, you know, in this pandemic is really crazy. You know, it's teaching us that you have no control of your life. It's teaching all of us that something could just happen to someone. They thought they're okay, everything's fine. All of a sudden, they now have a sickness and all of a sudden, nobody could even go to them. They're already in the hospital. They're taken away from their relatives. You can't even see them. Nobody can talk to them. And all of a sudden, something happens and they're gone and they never had the chance to even declare Christ in their life. And so, friends, we don't want to wait for that. We can receive the gift of God today by allowing Jesus to come into our life that he could transform us. And then we will have a new life in him. Amen? Amen. Friends, eternal life with Jesus is the most wonderful thing that could happen to you and me. So that's why, friends, this gift is so valuable that we need to receive it for ourselves and not to keep it for ourselves but we need to share it with our loved ones who don't know that Jesus gave his life for them. And so that's why, friends, when we, when we have received this message, let us use it for ours, apply it in our life that will transform us, that we may have eternal life, and also that we could pass it on to others and they may also have eternal life in him. Amen? 
Do you receive that today? Friends, let me just say this to you today. If you have received the gift of eternal life, then thank God and ask Him to quicken you and give you a hunger for more of Him in your life that you would thirst for His righteousness and desire to serve Him with a passion. Now, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, today you can ask Him to come into your life. Even those of you that are watching, you can ask Him to come into your life. And I want to pray for you. Whether you're here or you're there online, I want to pray for you. Will you surrender your life to Jesus and receive him into your heart so you can have eternal life? I don't want you to miss this opportunity. I want to pray for you, and I'll pray for everybody else later on, but I want to first pray for those people who have not surrendered their life to Christ and I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to him. And so right now, I want to pray for you. So will you, everybody here, bow our heads before the Lord. And, uh, you know, I want to pray for those that are listening to me right now, even those that are online. Uh, if you want to receive Christ into your life so that you have eternal life, I want you to pray a prayer of surrender to ask God to forgive you. And so repeat after me this, this prayer, a very simple prayer. Just repeat uh, this prayer, uh, in, you know, and, and, and just follow after me, right? So even those watching online, repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And you rose from the dead that I may have life. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Friend, if you have prayed that prayer, it's a simple prayer. It's just a prayer of surrender. But if you've meant it from your heart, friend, Jesus comes into your heart and you now begin a new life with Jesus Christ. And so if you have done that, let's give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, praise God. Even if one person, the Bible says one person that repent of their sin and give their heart to the Lord, the whole heavens rejoice. And so if you are that person, you've given your life to the Lord, I want you to let us know. Um, please fill up a connect card. You know, the chat hosts that we have are standing by. Put it in there and say, I've committed my life to Christ. Or fill up the Connect card. And in the Connect card, there is a box that says, I committed my life to Christ. Check that box. We want to be able to give you a small gift. It's a gift, a little booklet that tells you about now what your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And also uh, give you a New Testament, um, a Bible. All right. So uh, please let us know. Now, I want to pray for the rest of us here who have already given their life to Christ. Um, you know, if you're here today and you're saying, you know, I want, I want my life to mean something. And, and you know, I, I have this eternal life in the Lord. But I, I was thinking of way down the road. But right now, I could enjoy that life. To have that eternal life with Him and that relationship with Him. And that, re that relation will be meaningful. I want to pray with you right now to do that, okay? So let's pray together. I want to pray for you and even those of us here that may be going through difficulties and challenges. I want to pray for all of you today, even those of you online. All right, so let's pray. Father, I pray, Lord, for all of us here who have given our life to you. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord God, that, um, Lord, you, you, you have sacrificed for us. Now I pray, God, that uh, you will help us by the power of your Spirit to walk in righteousness with you. Help us, Lord, to have a life to serve you, that we may enjoy this eternal life now, that we don't have to be thinking about somewhere down the road, but today, God, that we can enjoy that relationship with you, and that, God, even through the difficulties, the challenges that we face today, God, you are with us. And so I pray, Lord, for those that are going through a situation in their life right now, God, I pray for 
uh, every family that is here, oh God, especially those who, who have lost loved ones, oh God, those who, who have gone away from the Lord. God, we pray that you will bring them back into the Lord. God, we pray for our relatives that do not know you. God, I, we pray that you will uh, make a way, find a way that God will be able to share this message or somebody will uh, uh, share the message to them that they would have an open heart that they will give their life to you. And God, we just pray, use us, Lord, to be a, a, a channel of your blessing. Use us, Lord, to be able to share your grace to others who do not know you. Lord, that we will have a passion for you, that we would love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, O oh God. And so, Lord, we commit our lives to you once again, Lord, and use us for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Friends, I, I trust that you, um, th that you have enjoyed this series. I believe that, you know, this series, I believe, it has been a blessing to you. Um, remember this creed. Remember this whole series that we were, we were talking about. It has the foundational truths of historic Christian faith. Now, there may be some differences between denominations, you know, but the main things that we believe in is what keeps us united in the body of Christ. As a follower of Christ, apply it in your life so that no one can shake your foundation. Amen? Now, friends, don't forget to invite your friends. Um, you know, uh, for next week, starting next week, we're going to have a new series called Together that our host was talking about today, that we're going to start a new series called Together, and it's about us using the gifts that God has given us, the talent services. It's a lot of things we're going to learn about discovering our gifts and everything. So I want you to make sure you're here for, for the next three weeks of series or even online. And if you can come, make sure you come here because we have enough space here. So make sure you come. Um, and don't forget to invite your friends uh, on, for this brand new series. Amen? So let's all stand as we dismiss with the blessing of God. And you're welcome to have fellowship. Uh, you know, when you go outside, you can go out and uh, have fellowship with one another. Make sure you uh, maintain your social distances so that way we don't have an outbreak or anything. It's all for our protection. All right, so let's all uh, extend our hands to heaven. Even those of you watching online, let me just bless you today. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk under an open heaven. May he cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May he open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, and the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.